All right, so obviously there's lots of other filters that we could look at. If you open Photoshop, there's a huge list of stuff and it would be way too much for us to try to do all of them here. Um, but uh, I'm going to, in this example, build brightness, contrast, and inversion filters that might be interesting to you. Um, if you just wanna look at the code and jump ahead, that's totally cool because it really rehashes a lot of these ideas that we've covered so far, pixel access and stuff like that. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and add these. And one of the things we'll see is that by chaining filters and the order that those filters happen really changes how our image looks. So if we do brightness before we do contrast, we'll get one image, whereas if we reverse them, we might get something really different. Um, so, okay, I've got my image loaded here and I want to do some transformations using functions I'm going to make. So I'm going to do this again in setup. Let's make a little room. And one of them would be a Brighton filter. And again, we want to send in the image and then we want to send in an amount to change it by. Um, in this case, let's um, make that either a positive number, which will make it brighter or a negative number, which will make it darker. Um, let's try making our image darker here. Okay, and then we'll display the result. So I'm going to make a function. Yeah, I need a little more room. Function and we'll call this Brighton. And then for this, we would have an input image and an amount. And we're gonna be doing this a lot for the, these filters. So I'm just gonna copy and paste these. Uh, we need a for loop. We need to load the pixels. We need a for loop. We need to update the pixels and we need to return the result. Um, so we're gonna be using this a lot. And in fact, I might just go ahead and copy these. So we'll call this contrast and invert. Invert doesn't need an amount, so we'll just leave that off. Okay, that way we don't have to do this all every time. Okay, so for brightness then, we want to get our pixels at this coordinate. Actually, I should maybe have grabbed this too. Um, I'm again, I'm just going to copy this so you all don't have to watch me type all this. Um, this is using the pixel axis again. We get the index using the formula, the red, green, and the blue values. This is all just boilerplate. Let me add this to my other guys here too. Now you might think about, okay, maybe I need to make a function with a separate function that like extracts the color from the X and Y or something like, you know, you could kind of do that if you really wanted to. So then um, to adjust brightness, it's really easy. We just raise the value of each color. So red plus equals amount, green plus equals amount, and blue. Super easy. One problem we might run into though, if our red, let's say our red value is 200 and we try to add 100 to it, then we're gonna go over 255 and you're gonna get some weird results. Um, so we can use this very helpful function constrain, which takes a number and it keeps it within a certain range. Um, now you could easily write your own constraint function. It's just if statements, um, but this makes it really nice and easy. Um, and we'll ensure after we add the amount um, that we don't have any problems. So this will be blue, blue. And then we can just change our pixels back. So again, I'm gonna copy paste this. Um, our alpha stays the same. We don't need to change that here. Um, so all we've done is add a value. If it's negative, it's subtracting um, and then constraining it to the range and let's see the result. So there is it darkened by a hundred lightened by 100. Um, the maximum amount we could do is negative or positive 255, but that would result in a black or a white image. And then zero would be no change. We could do something more subtle or more drastic. Um, so that's Brighton. Brighton is really easy. Contrast is a little bit messier. So I'm gonna keep this here and we'll just say IMG equals contrast. And again, um, this is going to be, uh, we have an argument for the amount here. And I think this idea of like negative 255 to positive makes sense. Um, so we'll just continue to use that. Let's, um, let's see, should we increase it? Yeah, let's increase the contrast by like a lot. So now our contrast filter is going to work really similarly. We know we also want this. So I'm just going to grab this here. Let's stick this down with 
invert as well. Okay. So contrast, um, contrast is a little mathier. I'll put a link to where I, you know, this is not something I was able to figure out on my own, but I'll put a link to where um, I discovered kind of a method that seems to work well. Um, but the first thing that I think actually we wanna do are the algorithm that we're using expects contrast to be in a range of zero to four, not negative 255 to 255. Um, so I'm just gonna use map. Um, I think specifying contrast between zero and four is confusing. So we can kind of hide that. This is a great example of what functions do. Um, so amount is gonna be between zero or negative 255, 255, and I want it to be between zero and four. Cool, so that handles and kind of abstracts that for us. Then um, there's a couple of steps that we need to go through. First, we wanna convert everything, all our colors into a range between zero and one. So we just divide by 255, the maximum for our colors. Um, and so I'm doing divided by equals. This is like the shorthand for this. You could use map here too. Um, and we don't need to deal with alpha again because there's, it's not important for this. Then we need to apply the formula. And again, I'm gonna copy this in because you don't need to watch me do this. And this is kind of like that brightness formula. This is not something I've come up with. This is something that folks who do you know, image processing as a science have really kind of figured out and understood. Um, so this is our formula here. And you know this would be something you could play with and see what if I change one of these values, how does it affect the result? Maybe it makes something cool and freaky. Then um, we wanna constrain again. So I'm gonna paste this one more time. Um, this is the same as brightness, just making sure we stay in the range of zero to 255. So let's actually run this um, with no change first so we can see it. So that's our normal image. Um, if we make, bump up the contrast, we can make this negative and reduce the contrast. We could even make this more extreme. So now it's sort of washed out in gray or start getting like really super intense and saturated. And if we run two of these in order, we'll see that it affects the image really differently. So if I increase the brightness and then the contrast versus in the other order, really different result. And this is gonna be an important thing for you to play with. It's like, even just the order that these things happen really is gonna affect the output. Okay, last thing, let's make the invert filter. And this just takes the image as an input. Um, scrolling down, most of this is boilerplate here. We just need to access the pixels and put the pixels back in place. And um, the invert formula is really simple too. It's just the red value will be 255 minus red and green is the same idea. That's it, super easy. Uh, we don't even need constraint here. And now this is gonna flip our colors. So this is again, one of those things that's not intuitive if you were like, how do I do this? Um, but once you see it, it's like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, the last thing that I think is really fun is starting to abuse or glitch these filters. So for example, what if red is not 255 minus R, but it's 255 minus green, and this is blue, and this is red. You get this like weird mishmash of color, or what if it's, um, you know, I don't know, now I'm going totally crazy here, times divided by some values. We get this like weird thing, or maybe it's, multiplied, you know, I don't know, you start getting these really freaky images. And this is where these like fundamental ideas of brightness, contrast, grayscale, threshold, all this stuff is just a seed for you to start thinking and making and experimenting. And you don't need to know what you're doing to make something cool. You can just like experiment, hack, break stuff, find cool things um, as the result of just like exploring the code for the stuff.